Ah, oh, yes, swabs. Captain Jeff the Pirate here at your disservice. Welcome to Captain Jeff Reviews and Questions Adventure Time. All right, well, folks, we be getting near the we be on the home stretch, the final episode at Bay on the Horizon. Now, I was a little worried when I was so late reviewing these four episodes, but uh, seeing as how we haven't had the uh, final yet. Okay, let's just get to the review, shall we? So, we have four episodes leading up to the finale. So, how do they decide to do things? Let's see how it works out. The first episode, Blananas. <laughs> Blananas. Arr. It takes place immediately after the events of uh, the first investigation. Finn has gotten a letter that says, BRB Jake. He's wondering what's going on, so he'd be worried about Jake. And in his free time, he'd be trying to, to you know... He finds a magazine called Bleh, B-L-E. He wants to prove that he is funny. Bimo doesn't get his humor. The Princess Bubblegum don't get his humor. And the only one that does is Ice King, so it'd be an interesting pairing with these two. So they go forth on a quest to figure out who won the caption contest. It's like... Uh, <clears throat> I'm guessing Blaz is kind of like the Adventure Time equivalent of Mad Magazine with the New Yorker where you know you send in the caption contest. Arr. This was a weird parent seeing Finn and, J Finn and the Ice King together. Arr. And we, uh, we, heard, we got to see the full effect of the Demonic Wishing Eye, which was seen way back earlier on in the series. Arr. So it's weird, the animation style got really weird for a few moments, and we learned about its powers and capabilities. It was an alright episode, we then see what the caption was that won, and things between Finn and Bimo work out fairly well at the end. It was an alright episode, I guess, but uh, kind of a, it felt kind of like a filler or padding, like it, meh. Like, it was just a weird, it was just weird. Well, this, like I said, this being one of the far episodes before the end of the series, so I'd be given Blananas one thumb up. It's one of those you wouldn't have, you could probably skip this episode entirely and probably not to miss anything important or relevant. All right, the next episode, this also takes place immediately after the events of the first investigation, titled Jake the Star Child. We now officially learn what the creature is that has been following Jake around in this episode and from when we first saw him in his, uh, the day of his birth. The creature, it be named Warren Ampersand. Interesting name. And he takes, uh, Jake with him back to his home planet, or apparently their home planet, where Jake has been prophesized to defeat some ancient evil star creature thing to help save the world and whatnot. This would be interesting seeing uh, Jake once again acting on his own merits, interacting with the people around him. It's, uh, it was an interesting episode, and I kind of liked this episode. Not to mention the fact that the majority of it, they basically used various shades of blue, just like one of the color palettes. I kind of liked it. It was a good episode, but uh, when I was watching I was like, this seems vaguely familiar somehow. Now, there is a bit of a spoiler thing, so I'll be covering my mouth with it and putting up a warning that says, don't turn on the volume if you don't want the spoilers, but yeah. This is a good episode, and it uh, helps set up uh, the events for an episode later on in life. Quite literally, the next episode. <laughs> but uh, overall, it was a good episode. It was interesting seeing Jake, how he reacts to the environment around him, and how he reacts to his uh, biological father. Well, one of his two biological fathers, I guess. And seeing how he... And the question is, when, if, and or how will he defeat the ultimate evil? I give uh, Jake the Star Child a thumb and a half up. I enjoyed it. I thought it was fairly good. And now, here be the spoiler, so just to keep it muted until, uh, you know, it's safe. All right. So basically, uh, oh boy, if I could describe this episode, I'd just say, watch Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. That uh, kind of covers uh, the premise. All right. Now onto the third episode. The third episode, Temple of Mars, and oh boy, I'll be right, I'll be honest right off the bat here. This episode, I am on the fence about. I am very, I'm not sure whether to be giving it a thumb and a half up or just one thumb up. It goes back and forth so much, it's just, ugh. all right. So we just had the two episodes, which were immediately after the previous episode. 
of uh, first investigations, but this episode takes place five weeks down the line. So, I'm assuming that if the comic series was to ever come to an end, I'm sure this would be like, this would be padded in there somewhere with saying, Oh, I wonder where Jake is. Arr. Anyway, Jermaine shows up at uh, Finn and Jake's house looking for Jake. So he and Finn figure out he's somewhere in space, and they figure the best place to find space is someone who knows space. Oh boy, I'm not gonna like this. So they go to Mars, and here we meet uh, two interesting characters. We first encounter Betty, the betrayer from the Elements uh, mini saga, who's apparently serving some sort of uh, labor punishment. She has to fill in a hole with one grain of sand at a time to help her fix what's going on with the uh, crazy cap she has on. And it's being, her punishment was presented to her by King Man. Formerly normal man, formerly magic man. Ugh. Finn makes a good point of saying, if you're the one that uh, screwed up Betty, why aren't you doing the punishment? Yeah. King Man is still kind of a jerk, only to a lesser degree, but still, jerk minus less is still jerk, so ugh. Anyway, they say that Finn, that Jake is somewhere out in space, and so they have to go do this weird trial in this temple. Something that addresses each of their own psychological things to bring Jake back. Finn's uh, problem is easily resolved. Jermaine doesn't seem to have any issue, but the most, mostly these trials seem to be focused on Betty. It's how she's supposed to learn something, and like uh, how it's supposed to be about her. Now the good news is we do get Jake back, but uh, Betty doesn't end up learning anything, and the, the episode seems really heavy-handed and kind of confusing. It's like. Oh, it's supposed to be this, it's supposed to be that, emotional, psychological, oh. And Betty then does a huge, very ominous foreshadowing thing at the end of the episode. I mean, there were parts of this episode I liked, but other parts I was just like... It was like, going back and forth between annoyed and confused. I watched this, and I still can't wrap my head around it. I get how it's supposed to be... It's supposed to be describing Betty or trying to help her, but it just seems a little weird in some aspects. It doesn't like really do too much. This is one of those one of those weird episodes that Adventure Time throws in every once in a while. So like I said, I don't really know what to give this one, but uh, uh. all right, just uh, all right. But because I have to give it an official scar, because I, all right, I'll I'll give it one thumb up. This is an episode I think even. Now, unlike the first one with bananas, you could probably miss and not uh, skip and not miss anything. This one, even though it's a one thumb up, you have to watch it because it does add some continuity. And like I said, potential far shadowing. All right. Okay, so so far we've had two one thumbs and a thumb and a half up. This has got to end strong before it ends on the final note, and hopefully that one ends super strong. Final episode is Gumballia. So, apparently Gumball, Uncle Gumball, along with the aunt and the cousin, have set up their own kingdom of Gumballdia. And it's apparently within walking distance of uh, the Candy Kingdom. And there will be whispers and rumors and preparation for war. Each side is, uh, it's an arms race. And Finn, I like, because uh, over the years, Finn has actually gone through great character development. Normally he'd just be going in there and wanting to fight everyone, but he wants to try the diplomatic approach to prevent any innocents from being harmed. He wants to speak with Uncle Gumball to try to settle peace, because Princess Bubblegum and her infinite wisdom is still too hard-headed to try to find a peaceful solution. At least, yeah. So, he does try to sort things out, and you think maybe, just maybe, there is a chance for peace. But, you know what? No. I don't have to worry about the spoiler for this one because this this has to be told to get you ready for the final episode. <sighs> Unfortunately, by Gumball's actions, the Candy Kingdom is now ready for war. And the final part of the episode is a great setup because they know what they're doing. Gumball, who is now apparently the arch nemesis of Finn and Jake, has decided to gather a rogues gallery of people who have a legitimate gripe or semi-legitimate gripe with either Finn or Jake, both of them, or the Candy Kingdom in some general sense. Yeah, seriously, they were going through the list of all the... Seriously, at the end, it's like you see a lot of people that Finn and Jake have faced, and while they've been defeated, they have, you know, been slain or destroyed, but, like, these are characters that would come back or live to fight another day, so 
I am loving how this is set up. So yeah, the final episode is going to be a great battle. So I am really excited for this. We even see a, a very funny part at the very end. <sighs> so, Gumball to ya. I liked it. It was very good. Very strong ending for the four part uh, pre-finale. Pre I give it two thumbs up. So yeah, the last four episodes, eh, not their strongest lineup, but uh, two out of four, and two of them, two out of four, pretty good, pretty good. I'll take half better than none. So, how will the series finally end? I know from, from what I've heard, the episode is going to be like a, I think it's going to be like a 45 minute ordeal, so, I guess 45 minutes for the animation, so commercial stuff, so maybe an hour long? Special season finale, series finale. Hopefully, there's a lot of there's a lot of loose ends that still need to be tied up. Now, I like how over the years we've seen other characters and gotten focus and background on not just Finn and Jake, but the show. It grew, it developed, it became something more. It it was good. It was start off as a series of one offs, and then it had like arcing stories, and we even got like elements and stakes. We got two micro stories within the series. It was really good. It was really good. So I'm excited to see how this episode, how this whole series finally ends. So yeah, two two one thumbs up, a thumb and a half up, and two and one two thumbs up. I look forward to seeing this final episode. And when it happens, well, you still be having the Captain Jeff. I just won't be doing adventure time, except for uh, the Pirates of the Enkai reading, which is supposed to be coming out uh, sometime in June. So I look forward to playing that. Till next time, this will be Captain Jeff reviewing and questioning adventure time. Saying thank you for watching, and as always, our.